So recently, Green Stuff World released these, these dipping inks, which are meant to be like a more budget-friendly alternative to things like Army Painter Speed Paint and also Contrast Paint as well. So I picked up a few of these, so I bought these, ordered them and got them shipped over to see how that compared and in this video I'll just be bringing my first impressions about these and whether or not they do have promise or if they're just dead on arrival. So first up I'm going to pass you over to Sean of the Past just to give you his initial impressions of these. So I've not even used them yet and already I'm really impressed. Obviously first thing they come in this kind of funky looking shipping box which is branded with Green Stuff World on them. Um, I, I don't know if this is even more important than the actual paints themselves, but they come with this little leaflet and it's not just about the brand and what they're all about, but it has colour comparison for all of the different paints that you can get from them, the dipping inks anyway, and it shows what they will look like on different coloured undercoats. That's massive compared to some Flight Games Workshop, which literally just throws all of the contrast paints into a cardboard box and leaves it to it. This is a real big win and it'll be definitely very handy and because it's printed, you're not relying on a screen, which could have different color calibration, not really show the true colors. I mean, this might not show the true colors, I guess we'll find out, but this is just a nice handy little leaflet to have to kind of give you an indication as to what colors are gonna be what. And then the next thing, they're big. And I know that people always tell me, don't worry, size doesn't matter, but these are surprisingly big. Look, here's your like contrast paint versus, obviously, the Green Stuff World paint. It's three times the size, or just over three times the amount of paint that you get in here. So bear in mind they're like half the cost of a contrast paint and you're getting three times as much. If these are good, then, well, find out. So back over to Future Sean once I've tested these out. And it will give you the overview as to whether or not these are any good. I can't really drink them. They're that big, I could have a nice shot of these. Shouldn't drink paint. That's what my doctor would tell me. But my doctor doesn't watch these videos, so I'm going to drink all the paint. Don't drink paint. So presentation aside, another thing to note as well as I've been using them, they do have a mixing ball in there, which is really handy for obviously kind of getting all that paint mixed up nicely. And also they're about the same diameter in terms of, I guess like footprint as your contrast paint pots as well. So if you already have a paint rack for your contrast paints, you see them much, much taller, but they take up the same footprint. So just bear that in mind for kind of stacking them or putting them somewhere that you normally hold your paints. So what were they like to actually use? Well, first up, I started off with this Orc and I was a bit unsure how it would work on this because this had um, it was a normal gray primer and then I used a white ink over top so it was a bit shiny and glossy getting the paint on this I wasn't too sure how well it would stick so the first one I did was this acid green and started popping it over obviously all the flesh and the one thing that I noticed throughout this whole process was anything that's natural with these like your skin or scales or anything like that these look really good they are a little bit more translucent, so compared to something like Army Painter or your contrast paints, they definitely don't, I guess, pick up as much colour. It feels more like I'm tinting the model than painting it, like I get with the other ones. However, on things like skin, these paints look really good, but not so much on other things. We'll come on to that. So I hit it all with the green first, and the first thing that I was noticing just was how much more translucent they are than other paints that I've been using in the past. Not a massive deal, but I could definitely see myself wanting to go back over it. And I started sloshing more on there than I normally would. One thing to note is it didn't run anywhere, even though obviously they are more translucent, I was probably using a bit more paint than usual. It didn't spill over onto areas that I didn't want it to. Something like Army Painter Speed Paints, that is definitely an issue that I found in the past. They're much runnier and they run all over if you don't control yourself. So that's quite nice. You don't need to be quite as controlled with these, which I suppose is a big win. Moving across, I used the browns. I started doing things like the leather straps and the fur and everything, and that looked okay. There's sort of like no complaints there. It is a bit more translucent again than I was expecting. I did it, it's this Elfwood Brown that I used for it, and it's quite nice. It's a bit flatter than I'd like, but there are some highs and lows and everything in there, so it's an okay paint. And then moving on to the one that was probably the most disappointing out of all the ones I've picked up, and it's not necessarily a dig at Green Stuff World for this, because the competition is so hot in, the, in this space, and this is the Misted Yellow. Now, the Zealot Yellow by Army Painter, and the Yandon Yellow, I believe it is, by Contrast Paints, they're fantastic yellow paints for a speed paint. This one, not so much. It's not bad, you know, points for effort on this one, but it definitely felt a lot runnier and a lot, lot, lot more translucent than what I've been using in the past. And this definitely feels like one of those colors that if you really wanted to get that really nice pigmented color, really vibrant yellow, you're just not gonna get it unless you do a couple of coats on this one. So again, bear that in mind. It's far more translucent than something like Yandon Yellow or your Zealot Yellow from the other competition. 
Once I'd sloshed the brown and the yellow on there, I went back in and I figured I may as well try out some of the other colors. So I hit it with this red, which I apparently cannot hold on to, this red cloak dip. And I did the armor and I did things like kind of the metal bits on the bow. And then I called it there and I figured I'd come back in and just see how it looked later on. So yeah, I think the green looks really good. The red, I'm not too sure about. And like I said, I think it's, it just looks good on natural surfaces, but less so on unnatural surfaces or flat surfaces like the bow or like the, I guess, the armor. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. It might just be a preference thing, but I'd be interested to know what you guys think. Moving across, I moved on to this demon by One Page Rules. And this one ended up looking pretty good because it's mostly natural surfaces. So I hit it with the red first, popped it all over like the flesh areas and then I hit it with this papyrus ink which looks really nice it's basically a really good rival to contrast paints or to army paint or speed paints it's their bone version and I think it looks really good it gives a good amount of coverage there's a nice bit of contrast in there as well so this one's one to be looking at if you're going to replace anything because it's actually a very nice paint to use once that was done I used this goth skin on the loincloth area and this comes out more of like a pinky purple, which is, in my opinion, a good thing rather than the flesh shade. And you'll see that more on the next one that I go on to. Once I'd popped that on, I just called it there. Then I moved on to my third one, which was this Lizard Man by a One Page Rules. I really like this one. And again, because there's so many natural surfaces on this one, it looks really good in my opinion. So I used that goth skin dip all over like the, the skin and the scales. And it looks nice. It gives so much good coverage on this one. There's a good amount of contrast in there. There's some nice highs. It's quite vibrant. Looks pretty good. It is a little bit more translucent than what I'm used to working with, but it's still a nice paint to use. So this is one, again, to maybe consider replacing some of your other paints with. Once I'd done that, again, I grabbed that papyrus dip, sloshed it all over like the bone areas, the spikes, the armor, the weapons. And then I called it done at that stage. Now, the first thing that I noticed about these three models is that normally once you've done that, if you've used like your contrast paints or your army paints, speed paints, is you could call it done. I normally don't. I normally go back in with like a dry brush to get some of those highlights and then I hit it with a wash, but you could leave them done and they'd be ready to go onto a game table. You'd have a good amount of shadow in there, a good amount of highs and everything else. But due to, I suppose, the translucency of these, they looked more like they'd been painted with watercolors than like a traditional paint. And I know contrast paint and army paint and speed paints do sometimes have that effect, but these have it to a more extreme. So just bear that in mind. You could get them and just put them onto a table straight away. They've got enough color on there and enough, I guess, differentiation, if that's a word, between all the different colors. So you could put them onto a game table, but in my opinion, they needed a little bit more. Now, before I move on to the next stages to see like the reactivation, how they work with a wash, and I guess how they work with some metallics and stuff, there is one big major issue that I wanna talk about. Now, what I found is on any of the areas where it pooled, it cracked. So I left them to dry just to see what would happen before I did anything, because I just wanted to make sure that they were going on there nicely, and the paint cracked in different areas. So anywhere where it pooled, so on this orc, for example, on this like kind of loincloth, this leathery bit that's got around the bottom, that yellow, it cracked where it pulled around like his chest, anywhere there that it pulled, it started to crack. The armor had also started to crack as well. And I did wonder whether or not it was down to that undercoat that I'd used. Like I said at the beginning, I'd used like that ink over the top of it, so that could have potentially been doing it. However, I also found the same on the demon as well, and less so, but it was also present on this lizard man as well. Now, when you go back in there and you put a wash over them, which we'll come on to, it takes away the issue. You don't really see it that much, but it is worthwhile bearing in mind that because they are more translucent, maybe it's because I was using more paint on there that it caused more pooling. But where I've done that with contrast paints or army paints or speed paints in the past, I've never had an issue where the paint has cracked and like pulled apart. It's just never something that I've seen. But I did see it on all three of these models with this paint. So just bear that in mind. It might be that I've got potentially a bad batch. Who knows, it is in its early stages, but the paint's cracked, so do bear that in mind. But if you are the kind of person who does a one coat of this and then you don't wash it and you don't dry brush it or anything like that, it is a major issue with these that you're then probably gonna have to go back in there and do some cleanup. And because it's peeled apart, you're gonna have some just odd spotches or splatches or I have no idea what I'm trying to say. You'll have some odd areas where you'll have a lighter color where it fills in the crack and then some darker areas around the cracks. So again, bear that in mind. It is something to consider if you're looking at these paints. So moving on from that, I first up, I decided I would try metallics just to see how much it reactivated or not. 
I didn't find any reactivation issues and it's not the most in-depth, this is more my first impressions of it, so I'll do a more in-depth video for my review of them, but I didn't find any reactivation issues when I was putting additional paint on top. I also got a wet brush and just kind of dragged it all over and I didn't find any reactivation issues there, so that's one good thing to bear in mind. And then I decided I needed to try some washes. So with the Orc, I tried the obviously traditional null oil just to see what would happen there, sloshed it all over. I'm happy to say that it looked good. There were no issues there. I didn't come back in and find any of the colors running or reactivating or anything like that. So that's a big bonus. The other great thing when you wash these models is it covers up any of those cracks. Because obviously the wash is going into those recessed areas where the paint seems to be more likely to crack. So that's pretty, I guess, a big bonus there. If you put a wash over them, then you don't have to worry too much about that cracking issue. It's still something worth considering, but it pretty much just gets rid of it. Moving across on to the Demon and the Lizard, I use my traditional oil wash, which is basically mixed up with spirits and an oil paint. And the reason I like trying this over anything before doing any kind of varnishing is if there's gonna be a reactivation issue, or if there's gonna be an issue with that undercoat, this is probably when we're gonna see it because you're using something like a harsher chemical over top of it. I'm happy to say I didn't have any issues at all with reactivation. And when I went back in with the Q-tip to wipe off like the spirits and the oil wash about half an hour later, I didn't find any issues with that Q-tip rubbing off any of that bottom layer of paint. So big win there. This paint, although sometimes cracks in some of those kind of recessed areas, it's really sticky, it stays attached to the model, it doesn't seem to reactivate when I was throwing different things at it. And the final thing that I tested was what they like through an airbrush. Now obviously if you use contrast paints or speed paints, they can be really nice, but you do chew through them pretty quickly because they're smaller pots. But these, because they're such a big pot, I figured these are probably ideal to use for an airbrush. And I am happy to say that I've knocked that one over and it's a really nice, vibrant color. I used the red just to see and it sticks very nicely and it layers up very nicely as well. So you can start off with like a, it was more pinky when I started kind of blasting it through and then as you built up those layers with the airbrush, you get to this more vibrant red. So you've got quite a nice amount of control over it. And I've got to say, these as airbrush paints that I keep knocking over, these as airbrush paints, I think they could be really, really good. Obviously they don't cost a huge amount compared to things like your speed paints and your contrast paints, but they're very, very nice on the model. So big win in that respect. So all in all, my initial impressions. Presentation is fantastic. The cost of these is really, really appealing. And obviously the amount that you get with them and how they're presented and everything else, I'm a big fan in that respect. If you need something on a budget, then they're not bad. I I've got to say, you can get some good results. And these three models here, I've gotten some pretty good results. If you're the kind of painter, like when I first got back into this hobby, I used to grab my contrast paints and I would only use contrast paints. That would be it. I'd literally hit the whole model with contrast paints. And to be honest, I always felt that they looked good enough to go onto a table and I wouldn't have any issues with them. If you're that kind of painter who literally just wants to replace your contrast paints with your speed paints with something more budget, then I don't think they're for you because you do need to do a little bit more with them afterwards because obviously you have things like the cracking issue that I've experienced and you've also got that those colors do look a little bit more washed out than the competitors. However, if you're the kind of person who goes back in there and you do some highlighting and you throw a wash onto them and you do more and you literally just treat this as the base layer, so literally just blocking in some color and then moving on to do some more bits afterwards, then they could be a worthwhile thing to check out. Again, they're the type of thing where there's some really good colors in there. This like goth skin is fantastic. I really like this papyrus ink as well. And the red cloak isn't too bad. So there's some in there that really stand out and some not so much. Like the yellow, unfortunately, it just doesn't live up to the contrast paint or the speed paint, but they're quite hard paints to beat in my experience. So to sum up, if you're the kind of person who likes to do one coat and pop your miniatures onto a table, they're probably not that sort of thing. However, if you are somebody who likes to pop them on, just block in that base coat and then go back in there with your wash and your highlights and everything else, then they could be worthwhile checking out as an alternative. In my opinion, these in their current form come out at a pretty standard third in comparison to your contrast paint and your speed paint. They are a nice to have or an extra tool to have in your toolbox, but I certainly wouldn't go out and replace everything that I've got with these just because I've had some issues with them. And I guess as I do a deeper dive, I'll figure out a little bit more, have a play around with them and just see how they do. 
Now, let me know in the comments below or head over to my Discord channel to discuss what sort of things you'd like me to see check out in the full video. So I'm going to do a full review video in the next couple of weeks or so, but I want to have a bit more time with these. I'm going to do a full comparison of the same mini with contrast paints, speed paints, and obviously the dipping inks as well. So let me know if there's anything you want me to experiment with them, see how they perform, mix them up. I, I don't know. World's your oyster. Let me know what you'd like me to experience with these. I've got to say, price-wise, they're really appealing. I I love the way they're presented, the way they arrive. I mean, contrast paints cost an arm and a leg and they come in a box, a little cardboard box with no branding on at all and they're just thrown in there haphazardly. Army Painter do a slightly better job, but Greenstock World have nailed it with the presentation and it's really impressive, especially considering they are so much cheaper. I just wish that they were just not quite as translucent and obviously that they didn't crack because that's a pretty major issue for a lot of people out there. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Have you used these already? Are you experienced the same cracking issue? Have you come up with any way to get around that? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting proposition. I like them. They just need a little bit more refinement in my opinion, and then they could be a really good alternative to contrast paints and army paint speed paints. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more 3D printing and painting content in the future. And also head on over to my Discord channel where we chat all things hobby. If you really want to support me, head on over to my Patreon channel because it just helps me to buy more things like this so I can do more content for you guys. In the meantime, stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye.